So this year, Ducati announced their massive update to their super power cruiser naked muscle bike, the Diavel, replacing its long-standing V-twin engine with a new V4 that's trickled down from their Panigale superbike. And I recently had the pleasure of riding it at the international press launch, and it's an absolutely phenomenal motorcycle. But is it enough to secure its place as the king of the performance power cruisers? Well, in my experience, there's just one bike that comes close, and that's the mighty Triumph Rocket 3, one of the most imposing motorcycles available on the market, both in terms of stature, but also its performance figures. And so in this video, we'll go through all of our key scoring categories, rate each bike, and then at the end, declare a winner. Now, first up, we've got that brand new engine in the Diavel V4. Their V4 power plant was first seen in the Panigale sports bikes, and it was a revelation in terms of performance, being able to rev way harder and therefore produce way more peak power than the V-twins that came before. It. Ducati then went on to use it in their Street Fighter V4 Naked and the Multistrada V4 Adventure Bike before finally putting it to use in the Diavel Power Cruiser. Now specifically this is the same V4 Gran Turismo variant as the Multistrada so it gets rid of the fiddly desmodromic valves that Ducati are so famous for in favour of the way more common spring actuated valve system. Now the trade off is that it can't rev as high so peak power is significantly reduced but the big plus is that the service intervals are massively extended to a super impressive 60,000 kilometers or roughly 36,000 miles, which is double that of the Panigale V4, for example. And yet, despite that, it still makes super impressive power figures. So 168 horsepower peak at 10,750 RPM and plenty of torque with 126 newton meters at 7,500 RPM. This thing is absolutely rapid when you wind it up and it feels much more akin to a super naked than a cruiser style bike. The acceleration is phenomenal and the V4 soundtrack is super addictive. <laughs> Plus, the engine also gets a couple of neat bonus features like the counter-rotating crank, which helps with agility and handling, but also the extended cylinder deactivation system, which switches off the rear cylinder bank automatically when you're riding at lower revs in order to help keep the rider cool, but also optimize for fuel efficiency and emissions. Now let's take a look at the Rocket 3 though, which is another incredible engine that makes humongous performance figures. In fact, this is the largest capacity production motorcycle engine currently on the market at two and a half liters and in fact the closest thing i could find is harley davidson's 135 cubic inch crate engine that translates to about 2.2 liters but you've got to pay another eight grand on top of the cost of your bike already to get that engine fitted so the rocket is an absolute monster and while the peak power figure of 165 horsepower sounds roughly equivalent to the diavel that's not the full story you see the engine is over twice the size in capacity and all that displacement means it can generate a huge amount of torque. So again, more than any production motorcycle currently on the market at 221 newton meters, and it makes it super low in the rev range at just 4,000 RPM. That's almost double the peak torque of the Diavel V4, and yet made at almost half the revs. Now, the other thing that makes this engine feel kind of special is the cylinder configuration. So it's an inline triple, which is normally the preserve of middleweight sporty nakeds, not a big bad cruiser. In a two and a half liter bike like this you'd probably be expecting a huge chugging v-twin but the inline triple which is mounted longitudinally in the chassis feels smooth and easy to rev sort of like a giant triumph speed triple it's definitely unusual to ride a bike with that typical triple character but just with a massive bottom end of torque and a really beefed up sound at the exhaust too Now both have their merits for sure, but I think I'll have to hand this category to the Triumph just for those ridiculous torque figures and also the sheer audacity of Triumph to produce a two and a half litre motorcycle engine and make it a triple. Now the downside though of such a huge lump is that it's super heavy. I mean, look at this motorcycle. It's 99% engine and the engine is massive. I mean, this was never gonna be a featherweight and despite the fact that they've put it on a massive diet since the previous generation, they say about 40 kilogram was shared, it's 
still tips the scales at 291 kilograms dry, so that'll be well over 300 when it's fully fueled and oiled. By cruiser standards, it's not too bad. I mean, compare it to the equivalent Harley or Indian, and you might even say it looks pretty decent, if at least competitive. But certainly, when you climb aboard, it's immediately apparent that this is a very big motorcycle. That's not to say it doesn't handle well. I think I've always been impressed by the way it goes around corners. Of course, the weight is all slung pretty low, and the chassis components are top notch. You've got fully adjustable suspension from Showa front and rear, and also Brembo's top draw Superbike standard Stylema brakes, but it's just never going to be able to compete with the Diavel in this field, which is a much more slight and nimble machine. Here we're talking just 211 kilograms dry, so 80 kilograms less, which is just a massive difference. I mean, firstly, for the same power figures, you're going to get much quicker acceleration. Just watch any Rocket versus Diavel drag race on YouTube to see the difference, but also stopping and turning are both going to be quicker as well. And the Diavel rides basically like a super naked, just with a much more comfort bias riding position. Now the running gear is comparable. So you've got the same Brembo Stalema brakes. You've got fully adjustable suspension too, this time from Marzocchi and also relatively sporty Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3 tires. But it's just that huge difference in weight that's really the major factor that separates these two machines. And I think on a good twisty road, pretty much all of us would choose the Diavel any day. Arguably though, Triumph weren't really aiming to build a Diavel when they made the rocket. Otherwise, they would have given it the same engine as something like the Speed Triple. Now this is meant to be a big cruising weapon with some real road presence. And I think that actually becomes a big benefit when you're out doing decent miles. It's got that weightiness that irons out the road. And you've also got this super commanding bar position, a big wide saddle, and a choice of peg positions. In fact, there are two model variants to choose from. So you've got the R, which is more like a roadster with mid pegs and a strip back spec, or the GT, which is more so meant for like long stints and perhaps a little bit of light touring. And so you've got a bit of a fly screen, the stretched out forward peg position, and also a passenger backrest too. Plus you can choose your peg position from the accessories catalog if you so wish. So you could take the GT model and fit mid pegs or vice versa. Now the Diavel isn't bad at all. I found it perfectly comfortable to ride if you sort of think of it more as equivalent to like a naked bike. That's certainly more so where the foot peg position sits, but you do get the cruiser-esque low and wide saddle and also the wide and stretched back bar position. Plus there are a few accessories in the parts catalog like the touring screen and the passenger backrest. But the thing is, it's just more of a bike that feels like it's always raring to go rather than a low and lazy cruiser with a big dollop of bottom end. And so on a longer ride, I'd have to go for the Rocket. Now from a tech perspective, both bikes are pretty much stacked. So the Diavel gets four riding modes of sport, touring, urban and wet. And there's a six axis IMU which feeds lean data into the rider aids of which there are plenty. So there's cornering traction control, cornering ABS, wheelie control, launch control, an up and down quick shifter, cruise control, and you also get their multimedia phone integration which opens up turn by turn nav if you have that accessory installed. Now I particularly like the TFT display on this bike which is super clear and easy to read and it also gives you a little bit of that sporty Panigale or Street Fighter vibe. The Rocket gets a slightly more unusual dash that does contain all of the functionality of a modern color TFT display but it's just built into a more retro looking rounded form factor. Now it does work nicely, there are some neat variations in the sort of screen layouts, but naturally you've got a little bit less screen space than the Diavel. Now on this bike you also get four riding modes, plus lean sensitive traction control and ABS, and the cruise control, the phone connectivity and navigation, as well as hill hold control and keyless ignition. And so each bike has a couple of extra features here and there when you compare them like for like. So I think I'm going to give this one to the Diavel just because it's got that regular rectangular TFT display, which I think is actually easier to use and easier to read at a glance. Now from a style perspective, they're both imposing looking bikes with some awesome design features. And specifically on the Diavel, I've got to give a shout out to that tail light design, but also the massively wide rear wheel on a single sided swing arm, and also the quad exit exhaust system, specifically actually the one in the accessories catalog. I think it's an Akropovich race exhaust. It just looks incredible. But I think overall, I'm going to give the point to the Rocket here, because to me, it basically looks like a concept bike that's made it to production. And the proportions are just so huge with that humongously wide fuel tank and the fat front tire. Plus, the level of finish is exceptional, down to the details like the fuel tank strap and the filler cap. And I also love the triple headers coming out of the right hand side of the engine. Now on the prices, the Rocket 3R starts at £21,995, with the GT 
GT model starting at 22,695. Now the Diavels starts at 23,595 for the red model and you'll also pay another 300 quid for the blacked out version and they've got to be one of the only manufacturers actually charging more for the black paint job. Anyway, similarly capable bikes, each with their own strengths, but I've got to give this one to the Rocket because it's at least one and a half grand more affordable. So that makes it 4-2 to the Rocket, but that's assuming all these categories are equally important to you, which they won't be for most people. The Diavel is an absolute blast to ride, and I reckon a lot of people will value that super low weight figure and the resulting agility far higher than some of these more superficial and techie features. So as always, I'd love to know which one you'd pick down in the comments below. Do let me know. And if you want to see more of my favorite new Ducatis for this year, I've made a list at Motorcycle Live. Link to it on the screen here so you can give it a click, give it a watch. Let us know which bike could be your pick down in the comments on that video as well. Many thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the next one.